And so, with that ending cutscene, UFO Aftershock comes to a close. The game is over! There is no non-canon ending of UFO Aftershock, the only ending is the one that you saw there. An ending I might add that the ending cutscene actually crashed the game, and that version of the cutscene I actually didn't end up putting in the video, the last one, because the volume on the ending cutscene is exceptionally quiet compared to the game itself. So I uh, had to re-record that ending cutscene and boost the volume, and attach that to the end of the last video. But that aside, the ending of UFO Aftershock compared to, say, Aftermath was very... muted. I think the whole thing about it was that it was very muted. You went there, there were a few enemies that weren't particularly difficult. I mean, the, um, the uh, Merm Angels and the Merm uh, Octopuses were not that tough. One could easily be killed by energy weapons, the other one could be killed very easily with uh, ballistic weapons, and then as soon as you go on to the uh, point where the uh, end is, the game just ends. There's nothing for you to destroy. Admittedly, that was uh, done in the previous parts of the mission, where you go through the uh, base that you went through originally in the first game, and I might add, was a lot more difficult to go through on the first game. The, it was so much more challenging to deal with on the first game, the uh, Reticulum base. There were barely any Reticulums at all that we encountered this time round. And that sort of adds to the whole muted aspect of the ending. It's um, a little underwhelming. Perhaps it was because I played through it previously and uh, I'd got to this point and it was uh, a little... Um, I sort of knew what I was expecting, but I also sort of hoped that my memory was playing tricks on me and that uh, it was harder than I recalled it being. Because even when I played through it before, that ending wasn't that difficult. I mean, the, the Merm Octopuses were actually more challenging because I hadn't researched things as well, so I didn't have as uh, decent a selection of weapons or as good a selection of soldiers. But that's neither here nor there. UFO Aftershock. How is it as a game? Especially after looking back on it from uh, playing it years ago, it's still a very good game. I still very, very much enjoy it. It's got a great combat system, I dare say it's a, a vast improvement on the Aftermath one. And although the art style has changed, it hasn't changed dramatically, the plot still has its definite serious points, and you do, especially in the middle part of the game, when you have to deal with the cultists, the war gods, and the star ghosts. If you don't have a decent enough team, there is a huge amount of peril there, because they all have their own strengths and their own weaknesses, and you have to approach them with different uh, styles of combat. Unfortunately, a few things most certainly hold the game back, and it's not the music. I quite like the music. The first thing, of course, are the bugs. The bugs that almost stop this Let's Play from being finished. <laughs> Because the fact that the Pillars of Death can just spawn outside the boundaries of the map is a game-breaking bug. And uh, the fact that you need to install an unofficial patch to fix that isn't very good at all. It does sort of speak of a, a rushed nature at the end of the game where planned features and things they wanted to put in didn't end up getting in. And uh, I've heard from the various comments that that's some of the stuff that's happened. It is a shame. Because uh, after math was actually a very polished um, product, there weren't really those things that happened, or either that, or my memory is deceiving me there. But uh, after math, um, after math had a very different atmosphere to aftershock. Aftershock is a lot more light-hearted. I mean, after math was bleak. Most of humanity and all life on the planet is wiped out, and only then do you have to start fighting against the vastly superior reticulans, with their extremely powerful battleships and um, spacecraft. With the biomass as well as an added threat, it was... it was tense. The plot missions were extremely difficult, and there was a sort of race against time to save what was left of humanity. This game, naturally, is 50 years later, so it's not as bleak in that regard, but it was just a lot more... The sense of peril wasn't necessarily there. And I think that sense of peril is very important when it comes to a um, UFO XCOM style game. Because you need to think that at any point you could lose. And you never really think, or I never really thought in my Aftershock playthrough, that I was going to immediately lose or very quickly suffer a humongous setback at any point. And that's something that the game 
lost. It lost it a little because of the kind of music. It wasn't as uh, wasn't as ominous as the first games was, and uh, generally, it's a fantastic game. AfterShock, I think, and I would still play it again after this one. But it lost something that Aftermath had. And I think if Aftermath had Aftershock's combat engine, it would be a fantastic, fantastic game. Even better than it actually is already. As for uh, Aftershock, Aftershock is definitely a let's play where I learned things about the game as I was going along. I had a very specific playstyle, and that playstyle was not particularly great. Um, I didn't expand my territories at all fast enough, and it showed. It definitely showed. It showed because I generally didn't have all the research capability uh, that I ha that I normally would have if I was expanding the territory a lot. Uh, and it made it go extremely, extremely slowly, especially the research uh, near the midpoint of the game when I'm trying to uh, research the uh, spacecraft parts. And I didn't have enough bases to build various bits of territory and that showed as well i mean there is a middle part of this let's play where it was just glacial and looking back on it i can see how glacial it was and i can only apologize for that i mean my playstyle was um basically a result of how i played it when i was younger and it didn't change and i wasn't particularly great at reading comments at that point uh, i have got a lot better at that and uh, learning things from those comments so um uh, Let's Plays are not only about, for me, playing it and enjoying it, but also learning new things. And I've learned a lot of new things about this game. And if I were to play it again, I would play with an immediately far more aggressive in terms of taking over territory. I'd expand a lot quicker, get more bases. Because I was worried about not have, finding any alien tech. But I shouldn't have worried about that. Because there is always alien tech out there. There was enough alien tech on that map that I could have had every territory and probably links through most of it into all the bases and I would still have had enough resources left over. It might have been a little tight after you built loads of uh, research facilities but in the end there's more than enough to go around. It's just at the, e the beginning I was a little starved for resources and I let that seep into how I was playing and thus expanded really slowly and I shouldn't have. But I figured out what I was doing wrong learned, changed the uh, style of uh, base acquisition, and it all went far more smoothly from there. The only pickup, of course, was the Pillars of Death, but uh, that got sorted with the unofficial patch that if anybody else is playing this game, definitely recommend downloading. Definitely recommend it. While we're here, actually, let's have a look at the credits. The very short credits. There's not much um, there to credit because there aren't many people there. I mean, it's a very, very short credit sequence to show how small the studio was that was actually working on this. We get to the voice actors. There aren't actually that many voice actors credited. Although there is one voice actor credited that I really want to uh, make notice of. Also, the bloom effect on the letters. Not the best thing, I think, for uh, being able to see this very clearly. At all. Now, let's get to the... Uh, there are the playtesters. Let's get to the voice actors. Come on. Let's see. Thanks to all the fans for their support and interest. Indeed, I'm glad that this game was made. Most certainly. Most certainly. Now, where's the voice actors? There we go. Where is Reticulant Admiral? There he is. Well played, intrepid native. And also, Mark. Apparently there was Mark there as well. And that is, in fact, the credits. Very short. And scroll very quickly. It's very difficult to actually uh, to actually read them. But it's a very small team that worked on this. And so you could see if they were rushed that things would end up not being uh, finished or, or compromised. A little sad that they didn't go around to finishing the... Like, fixing those bugs themselves. But they were fixed with the unofficial patch. Now. In general, I still really, really, really like UFO Aftershock. It's a really fun game. But looking back on it, it does have its flaws. And the flaws are a little more telling than in the first game. The, uh, the fact that if you just have an extremely powerful squad, you can just obliterate everything. At no point until I got the collapsible machine guns in Aftermath did I feel like that I was severely like outpacing 
the reticulans in terms of power, and even the um, collapsible machine guns had their faults. They weren't perfect. But the... Um, generally, for me, it's still a really fun game. And I, I, as I said before, really like it. The music's good. The battlescape's good. The fact that you can dual wield is great. The, change, the uh, changing up of how they um, gain promotions by giving them a set of skills that they train for that give them special perks. Also really good. However, the atmosphere was a little lost in this one, I think. It was far more light-hearted and hopeful and colourful as well. There were a lot more colours in this game than there were in the other. The aftermath is a lot drabber in colours, but I think that's intentional because of how bleak the setting is there. But um, Aftershock eventually led on to Afterlight. And I'm not a fan of Afterlight at all. Something was definitely lost in Afterlight for me in the uh, progression to the next game. There are far fewer, there's a far smaller selection of people that you can be in that. You don't have the ability to just train new soldiers up in the same way as you do in these two. And although that game takes place at the same time as Aftershock, it is remarkably different. It is exceptionally different. And I don't know what it is about it, maybe it's the way that Geoscape is different, or the combat, but I really didn't mesh with Afterlight. There's a lot to say if I decided to play it later, I might uh, might not now. I mean, I did play it a fair while ago in the past, but then it didn't mesh, and I don't know if it will now. Either way, I will be leaving the uh, After series for a little while. I mean, Aftershock took a very long time. In no small part due to my faults of... Uh, playing too conservatively in the middle part with the War Gods. Let's Play would have been over a fair bit quicker if I'd have expanded into territories faster and thus been able to do research quicker, that's for sure. But you live and you learn, and as I said, if I played through this game another time, I'd uh, expanded territories much quicker than I did before. But it's still a really good game, and I still recommend you play it. It's a fun game, it's a challenging game if you play it on the higher difficulties. And uh, on the difficulty I was, it ended up being trivial, mainly because I spent so little time expanding territory that we just gained, we just fought so many encounters that we just got really, really high level and just steamrolled the rest of the game, pretty much, for the most part. But uh, definitely give it a try. Definitely install the unofficial patch, the 1.3 patch. Definitely do that. I recommend it wholeheartedly because you definitely need it. And uh, have a look at Aftermath, and also have a look at Afterlight, if that's your uh, thing. It does take place on Mars, which uh, adds a another layer to it, because you're also terraforming at the same time as you are actually doing the Geoscape missions and everything else. And there is territory gaining, and mining, and resource gathering, and base construction. Well, there's only one base, but uh, there are other things you could do as well. It has a lot of the UFO elements, but for me, as I said, didn't mesh quite well. But maybe it might one day. So, what's to come after UFO Aftershock? I'm not quite sure in that regard. I've been uh, toying around with one or two things. I have a few ideas. But it's definitely not going to be a strategy game. At least not yet. I think this strategy game, taking as long as it has, I, I think I need a little bit of a break from strategy games. Although, not too much of a break if I was to decide to go into another one. I do like strategy games. I just don't have much experience with many of them. I mean, this had strategy elements in the Battlescape, and uh, Zed is a strategy game that I play, but there aren't that many more. But I'm sure that uh, in future, one way or another, I will return to some form of XCOM game, be it an official XCOM game or a spiritual successor. But that's for another time. The Earth has been saved. Gaston, Keith, and the rest of them can all have a well-deserved break relaxation after saving the whole planet and the human species from uh, inevitable death and destruction. I think they've earned that. So, I'm Kikoskia, and this was Let's Play UFO Aftershock. The world has been saved. But for how long? Considering they never made another game after Afterlight, uh, forever, I think, unfortunately. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later. 
You know, I'll miss Gaston and Keith and everyone else, especially how they really didn't want to be actually doing any kind of fighting. Always sort of just going, ugh, I suppose. All the other people in various uh, XCOM games are much more enthusiastic. It's like in Aftershock, they were basically realised that they'd gone out to fight War Gods for the 50th time, and they were like, oh, War Gods, really? Okay, let's go. But the fact that they had that attitude from the very beginning was just amusing. Just amusing to me. So anyway, we'll return to another game next time. Which one? Who knows? For I'm Kikoskia, and this was Let's Play UFO Aftershock. And I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.